Well, good morning, Ponce Church. Morning. Oh, that feels so good to just hear voices speak back instead of looking into the cavernous uh, void of no humanity. It's great to hear actual voices. So we're glad you're here, and especially to our Facebook uh, family. We're glad you can be here with us today to worship the Lord. Uh, we've got a few more people in the room today, which is very exciting. And uh, we're figuring out ways to keep you safe, keep you clean, and uh, keep you distant so that uh, we can keep doing this in a way that's healthy and keeps everybody uh, right where they're supposed to be and in a good spot. With that, uh, my name's Tolliver. I'm the senior pastor here at Ponce Church. And I uh, just want to take a few moments just to orient you a little bit. I've already mentioned, for those of you who are here, the different locations for uh, the restrooms. And as well, uh, the final instruction I would give you is that once the service is completed, please do not get up and rush out. Okay? There are two exits. There's one, the, Ped, uh, the Piedmont door over here, and there's also, you can use the exit in the back. Uh, please wait to be dismissed, because we don't want everybody kind of uh, cramming the aisles, and then we're totally... Uh, going against the purpose of maintaining social distancing. So there will be an usher to kind of help dismiss you so we can do it out, uh, be dismissed in an orderly way. Okay? Uh, just a few brief announcements in regards to life here at Ponce Church. Uh, first of all, as many of you n- know and have been getting all kinds of information regarding Build the Bridge. Well, we are happy to say and excited that uh, we have over uh, 20 people signed up to join us uh, on this journey. And it will start this evening uh, here at Ponce Church. And there will also be a Zoom option for those of you who uh, will be tuning in via Zoom. And so we're very excited about being a part of that. Uh, If you are still interested, uh, there's still some time uh, up until tonight. But after that, uh, we're going to have to kind of probably close things off because there's a lot of information, a lot of work you'll have to do to participate in that class. We hope you'll be able to do that as we continue to pursue God uh, in a ministry of reconciliation. I also want to make mention of the women's retreat that will be taking place uh, in October uh, in various different sites. We hope, especially for our women, it's for our women, uh, we pray that you will take part in those. There are different sites where that will be happening. It will be a Zoom event, but it will also be a time for women to gather, fellowship, and talk through issues that they're dealing with as mothers, daughters, uh, sisters in the Lord. Uh, Also, today, after the service, uh, for any of you who are new, if you would like to just learn a little bit more about Ponce Church and uh, get to know some of our staff, we will be meeting uh, after the service in the back chapel. uh, And then we're probably going to, I'm going to take you somewhere and get a lunch, and we'll just hang out and get to know each other a little bit. Okay? Uh, And then next Sunday, in the same location, our new worship director, Raymond Neely. You can give him a hand. Very excited he's here. It's his first first full Sunday. We're very glad to have him uh, a part of our team here. He will be meeting with all the musicians, uh, sound tech, video tech people, Anybody who has anything to do with the worship ministry at Ponce Church, we really encourage you to come to, to get to know Raymond, but also to hear and learn about the ministries uh, within the worship ministry of how you can get involved. And so that will happen next Sunday, correct? Very good. All right. You want to say anything? No, I'm good. Okay. All right, all right. And then finally, uh, this goes out especially to our Facebook viewers, but also to any of you who are here. If you're not in a community group yet, we would just highly encourage you to to find a way to get involved in someone. If you go to our website or approach myself, Larry, Ramon, any of the staff here, we will be glad to try to help connect you to a location that is uh, both uh, close and also will reflect kind of your stage of life. Uh, Whatever genre or demographic you want, we'll try to find you, get you into one, okay? Well, that's a lot of announcements, but we got a lot to um, get caught up on as we're kind of re-entering ministry here together at Ponce. So let's take a time of just brief quiet. I'll do an invocational prayer, and then we'll have our call to worship. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we praise you and we thank you this morning for the opportunity to be called once again into your presence. And we all 
much like the prodigal son in Luke 15, we all come back to your presence today realizing that in some ways we are the prodigal son and daughter. We see the ways in which our hearts lead us astray because of the flesh that fights against your spirit. And yet we are amazed that you continue to call us home. And Lord, that's what we all long for. We long to be home. We long to be known that we are known by you, loved by you, cared by you, provided for by you. Lord, we pray today that as we come into your presence for worship, may we experience and know the the love of the Father who comes running for his people, who's eager to forgive, who longs to clothe us with his righteousness and with his peace. May we, as the body of Christ, join in in the celebration of prodigals coming home to celebrate that the family is together once again. We praise you. We thank you. We ask that you would worship. uh, Your worship would be honoring to you and be edifying to your people. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know what's so awesome about us coming back together together is that um, our sovereign God, even through these times, has still continued to call his children to worship him. Some of you have done it in your homes. You've done it by meeting, you know, neighbors that maybe you never even connected to as much as you have before. But you found ways to continue to move the gospel forward. And that's what Christ calls us to continue to do. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit and through scriptures that God calls his children into worship. Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 100. Um, I will read the, um, uh, actually, I, myself and Mariana will take care of the leader role and then you guys will do the all and we'll do it both in English and in Spanish. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Psalm 100 reads, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Cantad alegres a Dios, habitantes de toda la tierra. Servid a Jehová con alegría. Venid ante su presencia con regocijo. Amen. All. Know, know that the Lord, Lord is God. God. It is He who made us, and we, and we are His. We are, are His, are his people, people, the sheep of His pasture. And enter His, his gates with, with thanksgiving, and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him, and praise His name. Reconocer que Jehová es Dios, Él nos hizo, y no nosotros a nosotros mismos. Pueblos suyos somos, y ovejas de su prado. Entrar por sus puertas con acción de gracias, por sus atrios con alabanza, alabadle, bendecid su nombre. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Porque Jehová es bueno, y para siempre es su misericordia y su verdad por todas las generaciones. Amen. I bless the Lord for that. Amen. 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 Let's just go before the Lord. How many of you know that the Lord is better than life? Amen. Amen. He's so much better than life. We're going to go before the Lord. We just want to celebrate God today. Amen. Let's go. Come on. Put your hands together like this. Here we go, see your love is everlasting. Your love is everlasting, it's an everlasting love. Your mercy is as new as every rising of the sun. And your loving kindness, loving kindness, better than life. Your grace is all sufficient. Your grace is all sufficient, it's an all sufficient grace. Your power and your glory are forever on display. For your loving kindness, loving kindness, better than life.
Part right here. All your ways are just, oh Lord. Yeah. Three times, come on. All your ways are just, oh Lord. You're just in all your ways. Say it again. All your ways are just, oh Lord. You're just in all your ways. One more time. All your ways are just, oh Lord. You're just in all your ways. And I will lift my hands, oh Lord, with gratitude and praise. God. Amen. Amen. He's better than life. How many of you know and believe that today? Amen. And that's why we come before the Lord. We come before the Lord singing joy to the Lord. Amen. I was told this is one of the children's songs, so everybody knows this and the kids know this one well. So we're just going to go before the Lord. Come let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout it out to the rock of salvation. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's go for it. God, we just give you all the praise today. Come, let us sing. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our Joy to the Lord. 
Lord, sing that with us. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Keep that spirit. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. No music here, just the voices. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Praise God. Amen. God bless the Lord. Give him a hand clap of praise because he is worthy of all the praise. Amen. Amen. Calabari. This song talks a little bit about <laughs> what it means to praise God with a genuine heart. And if you come into this place thinking that you got it all together, <laughs> let me tell you, you don't. <laughs> and that's okay. Amen. Because our God is a God of all nations, of all tongues of every nation and so I want us to sing this out with a genuine heart because that's how he wants us to come okay let's do it let's clap the hands like this clap there you go
bless the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. Please join me uh, for the pastoral prayer. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah reminds your people who are facing many threats to remember that it is you, God, who comforts, that you comfort Zion, that you make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord, that you, God, stretched out the heavens, you laid the foundations of the earth, you protect your people, and you call them your, your people. So, Lord, we give you thanks for your presence, that you are not a God who is far away. No, you are a God who is very near to us. So near, in fact, that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to be, uh, to be here, to walk on the earth, to uh, live among us, Emmanuel, God who is with us. He walked among us um, with humility, um, with obedience. He lived, he died, and was resurrected. And it is still among us even today. Holy Spirit, the great comforter that Jesus promised, um, is here with us as our helper, as our comforter. So we thank you, triune God, for your gift of mercy and your presence. And it is your salvation that calls us into relationship with you. We thank you for the chance to begin the process of being back together in worship with you and with each other. We thank you for the staff at Ponce Church and for those that have been working uh, with the worship and technical support of worship over the past six months to help keep us connected. We thank you for George, for Larry, for Elizabeth, for Mariana, for David, for Nikki, for Adam, for Hector, for Buddy, for John, for Katie, for Stephanie. I know there's others that I've missed, um, but we thank you for those. We thank you how you've gifted them and how they've used their gifts of service to us. We recognize that there are still um, many at Ponce that are not able to be here due to the pandemic. So we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would meet them, that you would comfort them, that you would allow them to, to worship um, and, and feel your presence. Help our church reach out and care for each other and encourage one another in love and good deeds. We pray for our children. Um, may you draw them to yourself. Um, we pray for their parents, that you would give them wisdom in the process of instructing and discipling them. Um, and we pray for our church that you would give us creativity and continue ways to minister to both parents and to children at Ponce in the midst of the pandemic. We also pray for those that are lonely, um, that may not have family nearby, may not have a roommate. Would you help us to continue to reach out to them and show your love to them? Help us to be one, uh, Jesus, as you prayed for us. Lord, we have been, um, it feels like in many ways, a long transition and adjusting to new things. Um, this plays out at a larger level in our world and in our own individual lives. So I pray and ask for patience and for peace in the many areas where we need that. I specifically think of the following uh, people that are going through transitions. We pray for Olivia and lift her up as she is transitioning to Texas to care for her father. We ask for provision for physical needs, but also spiritual um, and emotional needs. We uh, pray that you would comfort the Charles family as they grieve the passing of Kirk's father. We ask for provision for Andrew Stewart as he, as he is looking for new employment. And ask for others that are also um, looking for employment, would you uh, provide for them? Um, and, whether, and even if they're not looking for employment, would you provide for those who may be looking for a place to stay um, that have, have physical needs and emotional needs? Uh, there are also many in our church that are transitioning to new life experiences. Um, we thank you for the arrival of, of, a, of a child to Laurie and Winfield Tufts, their second son. We give you thanks for that. Um, we pray for new relationships for Grant Hedges' engagement. Uh, we thank you for the provision of several families with new places. We think of the Snows and the Boyds, and we ask that you would help them to use um, how you, what you've given them to love their neighbors, and to let your light shine through them. We also um, thank you, Lord, for the new transition of Raymond Neely here. Um, we give you praise for him coming here. We give you thanks for Larry um, and, and her uh, faithful service and how you 
have blessed us through through her work, and we look forward to um, how you will use Raymond to help us uh, grow in our worship of you. We pray um, now for physical needs, for those that are, are need healing, for James' niece, Mackenzie, for recovery for her in the ICU. Um, we lift up to you um, those that are, are struggling with with uh, physical ailments and that need wisdom and how to proceed um, and need healing. We think of the Swansons. We pray for Brad Taylor. We also lift up to you Tolliver's mother. Um, we pray for healing uh, for those, for Cindy Carroll's mother. We ask, Father, that you would, you would be the great healer to them. And now, Lord, I, I turn to, again, to ask you for comfort. Um, as we look at our world and as fires rage in the west, western part of our country, as we recover from a storm in the southeast with Hurricane Sally, um, help us to mourn with those who mourn. Um, help us to, to do good and love those that need your love. Um, we also um, think of the, the climate politically uh, that we're facing, um, whether it's political issues, um, racial tensions, community challenges. Lord, we need you. We need your presence. Um, may we remember that our true citizenship is in heaven, and not in this world, but you have called us to do good works in this world. So help us to know how to engage in the brokenness. Um, we pray that the upcoming mini retreats and our fall studies will help disciple us um, to, in, in some of the ways that we can engage with the world. Um, we also pray that through our interactions with family, friends, and neighbors, that our world would see you um, and would be drawn to you. We lift up all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Pat. Well, uh, we don't normally do this when we go to the sermon section where we introduce uh, our preacher for today, but this is a special occasion because my uh, comrade in arms, Hung Trung, is back. And we're very excited to have him back here to, to preach for us today. But this is significant for us because Hung represents our first church plant uh, out of Ponce Church. And he's got many of his core group members here today. I'm really excited to meet you guys and pray for you and very excited about what God's doing uh, in northeast Atlanta. And so uh, please be praying for Hung and Emily and their family as they are engaging uh, northeast Atlanta and with the gospel and bringing about the worship of Christ there. So we're looking forward to hearing from Hung today. Let me get situated here. So, so good to be back here, back home in uh, at Ponce. This is a church I've served as um, assistant pastor here. I started as an intern, actually, and then uh, God called me, called me to uh, serve this church as assistant pastor for 11 years, and uh, it was a great place for uh, me and my family, and we continue to love the partnership that we have with here at Ponce to help make the invisible visible at, um, in Northeast Atlanta. Our church plant is called Grace Emmanuel. We believe, um, as God's called us to Northeast Atlanta, is to make the invisible visible, it's only by the grace of God, and the goal and the ultimate goal of all church plants should be bringing the presence of God um, to his people. So we're Grace Emanuel Church, Northeast Atlanta. Our, our dream would be in the um, Buford, Buford Highway area. And I was thinking about uh, what to preach on this week as I uh, give a quick update of our church, is I was thinking about um, some of the invisible that we deal with in Northeast Atlanta. Uh, just like Ponce, Beaufort Highway is a dividing line of the city, both racially and economically. So there are lots of churches, lots of mega churches, corporate churches that are on the uh, west side, the uh, more upper class, high educated side of um, Beaufort Highway. But on the um, eastern side, on, it's, it's actually on the other side of railroad tracks. There are a lot of um, invisible people that are unchurched or dechurched in our area. And that's, that's our goal, that's our dream, is to make the invisible visible. And we only know that we can only be seen if our creator, our God, our Father, makes us visible and sees us. 
And that's, what, that's really what we're doing. We're not a church that's seeking to end uh, poorness. We're not seeking to end um, sexual orientation, disorientation issues. We're not ending uh, racial issues. But we believe the presence of God will bring heaven on earth. And that's our, that's our dream, and that's what we're, we're doing in um, Northeast Atlanta at Grace Emanuel. So uh, one thing I've done in the last nine years is church planning training. I've been through uh, different church planning trainings, and one thing that uh, seminary and church planning training never covered, never, ever covered, was planting a church during a pandemic. They never covered, hey, here's a case study. There's this pandemic, and no one can actually worship. What are you going to do? Um, no one ever told me, how would you do launch team means with mask or no mask? Um, but uh, it's, been, it's been an awesome opportunity for God to reorient our vision, reorient our goals. We had to hit the brakes um, on our launch team. And the pandemic, actually, God used, was very gracious to us. The um, pandemic um, helped us realize that we were such a diverse, unique group of people that we needed months to get to know each other. So we started these things called image groups. And image groups is our outreach evangelistic evangelism mechanism where we said every image matters. So whether you're Christian or not Christian, you could be a part of an image group. Whether you're ministering to the person in, um, in your neighborhood or the people you work with, you could do some sort of image group. Maybe it's um, you and another family trying to reach a family that you play soccer with. Their image matters. This is not a, um, an image group where there is a top-down uh, type of evangelism. This is, a, this is an outreach where every image matters, every story matters, and to be known is to be known by God and to be known by each other. So that's how we're entering people into our, our, our launch team, our church, is through the image groups where every image does matter um, and everyone's story is heard and uh, we, we see God through each other's image. So that's a little quick update. I wanted to share with you a little bit of why I chose 1 Peter Chapter 5 this morning as our passage. Um, one of our core values, we have three core values. One is we are uncommon family of God. Number two is the margins is our mission. Jesus says to be with me is to be with the least of these. But our first one, uh, our core value that we are going to cover um, is bringing heaven on earth. And bringing heaven on earth communicates so many different messages uh, to our people. Number one is it's about the presence of God. It's not about numbers. It's not about budgets. It's not about, hey, let's, how can we get to 500? How can we get to 1,000? That's not why we're doing what we're doing. Why God called us to plant a church is what we learned here at Ponce, is we just want to be with Jesus. We just want to be in tune with the Holy Spirit and in, to, in tune with the Holy Spirit leading us to the Father and to the Son and to that triune community of God. But bringing on heaven on earth also communicates it's a multicultural kingdom. If our church is monocultural, if it's monoethnic, we're not accomplishing the teachings of the Bible and the, the practices of the Bible to be a multi-ethnic, multicultural kingdom. We want to be a foretaste of heaven in Northeast Atlanta. And we have no excuses. Northeast Atlanta is one of the most diverse, diverse areas in our city. Beaufort Highway is the multicultural mecca of Atlanta. If you talk about learning to be in other people's spaces and where do you go to eat their food, hear their language, in Atlanta you talk about Beaufort Highway. This is what part of the multicultural kingdom. But there's a third reason why we say bring heaven on earth. Bringing on heaven on earth is to teach the next generation, our generation, the next generation, and generations to come, that this ain't our home. We're supposed to bring heaven now, but we're also a reality that this is in heaven. That the reality of our depravity, the reality of our brokenness, our sin, is that we're going to suffer. We should hate it here. But for some reason, there's a theology of prosperity that's taught in and through our church right now where it's all about our comfort. 
It's all about what we can get. It's all about, it's a consumer mindset. We treat God like a vending machine. I put this here, God, now you should bring this back 10, 20, 30 fold. It's not just the prosperity preachers. This is seeping into our mindsets. We are being discipled by this world that is anti-suffering. Do whatever I can. I make a lot of money just so my kids and my, my wife and my children don't have to suffer. But we are preaching a bringing, bringing heaven on earth doctrine. And Peter t- addresses this here. Peter is a, one of the first church planters in the book of Acts. And here Peter is addressing multiple churches that he has planted in Asia Minor, where we see a modern-day Turkey today. And Peter's reminding, is writing to these churches to remind them that, yes, you Gentiles have Israel stories in your story, because that story is God's people's story. So he gives them the uncommon family. He says, listen, you're a part of our family. It is not your ethnicity. It's your citizenship to Christ. And then he goes on and says, now to be witnesses, to be true witnesses of this Jesus, to be true witnesses of Christ is to be a witness as you suffer. And there's suffering that is happening with these churches. They are being attacked all through the Roman Empire. These little small churches are being attacked. They're physically at harm. They're financially at harm. They're emotionally, mentally. They have trauma. They have serious trauma because they are believing this man named Jesus who died and resurrected. And now there is this movement. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Three points of today as we're suffering shepherds is number one, never suffer alone. Number two, suffer with alertness. And number three, suffer with hope. So the three points today is never suffer alone. Number two, suffer with alertness. And number three, suffer with hope. Let's pray. Father God, we come as we hear your word, Lord, we receive from your word. May you remind us of the promise of the Holy Spirit that he is to remind us of every good thing we have in Christ. As we come to the table and receive the sacraments this morning, that we're able to receive it with grace, less of ourselves, more of you. Teach us to humble ourselves, to be a community of humility. As you give us this order of elders and sheep and shepherds, Lord, that you remind us, that we are your witnesses through our suffering. God, use your word. We know it does not return empty. It accomplishes the purpose for which you sent it. Send us your purpose to glorify you and enjoy you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So the text, we're going to start. I'm going to take it piece by piece. So we never suffer alone. So 1 Peter says in verse 1 through 7, So I exhort the elders among you, as a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Verse 5. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time, he may exalt you. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Never suffer alone. Peter is speaking to the diaspora of the early church, the spreading out of the early church. Not what he witnessed with Jesus. Not like he did witness so much with Jesus and his suffering and the cross. 
But what Peter is talking about is the early church's persecution. He's saying we are experiencing so much suffering because we believe in this Jesus. We've been ostracized by our culture, our government, our power. And we made ourselves nothing. This is the suffering. But now you have elders among you. Why is he charging the elders for their care? If you look throughout the Old Testament, God established his church way back in Genesis. Way back in Exodus, when he created the temple. He gave order. He gave order and order needed oversight. It needed shepherds. He knew his sheep needed shepherds. This is not a, just a New Testament model. We are a covenant church. We believe the Old and the New Testament come together. Whenever you see things in the New Testament, we have to connect something to the Old Testament because we believe God is telling one story and he has one message. Elders were established in the Old Testament. But you see, now today, elders are now a corporate church model. When you think about elders, we have people. Tolliver and I, we talked about this years ago, about choosing elders. And we said, number one requirement, if you ask to be an elder, you're not going to be an elder. We said, you, get, you haven't read your Bible. <laughs> if, you, if you read your Bible, there's no way there's no way you would come and ask us to be an elder. You see, what's happening is they're taking their boardroom meetings and they're thinking, church board. They're thinking, well, this is what it takes to be a leader at my work. Well, let's do this at church. Well, to move up the ladder at work, you have to do these certain things. Well, to move up the church ladder, I guess I'm going to appropriate those things into the church. And what happens is the elder board has been usurped by the world. The board of directors is not your session. There is no board of directors at our church. There are shepherds. These are shepherds that provide oversight and have to answer to God. If you read Leviticus, there's no way, there's no way you would want to be an elder. You do not want to be a Levitical priest because you had to be totally consecrated or you're dead. You had to be holy. You had to be perfectly like the law. You had to be the consummation of the law and you're leading and shepherding and bringing sacrifices for his people. But our session, our elder boys in our churches have been confiscated by the world. Why does, it's so interesting, if you go and you see these roles as oversight, not as shameful game, but eagerly, not domineering, but examples to the flock. And then he goes to the young, he goes to the sheep, and he says, God opposes the prophet, gives grace to the humble. Why? Why would he not say that to the elders? Why would Peter not say to the elders, clothe yourselves with humility? He says that to the sheep. Peter is exhorting the sheep and he's saying, clothe yourselves. What he says, clothe yourselves with humility towards one another. For God opposes the proud but gives grace. Doesn't, don't the elders need to hear this? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why he doesn't address the elders. Because the elders are on the bottom. Because the elders at this time were the least of these. See, our picture of what elders look like, they have comfort, they, have, they don't suffer. You do not want elders like that, Peter's saying. The reason he doesn't have to address this with the elders is because they are on the bottom. Their lives at stake. They have no money. They, their family has lost everything. If you look at the early church, these are the elders. It is a true sacrifice and suffering that the elders are modeling here. And what is God saying? God is saying to the sheep of God, you don't need to do this alone. You have anxieties. You have worries. You have anxieties over, you are suffering. 
Come learn from others who have suffered before you. Come learn. You guys, as, I, as I'm reading this and studying this, I'm like, I did not have this picture of elders. This is so countercultural. This, this, like, when I think of elders, I do not think of this. I think of people that have it together. I think of people whose families look beautiful. I think about the perfect family with the beautiful SUV, the white picket fence, the two dogs and a cat. Like, that's what I think an elder is. But that's not what Peter is saying here. Peter's saying the elders are the ones that are suffering. The elders are the ones that have anxieties that cast it to God. These elders have been through a lot of stuff. They've got trauma. They've got anxieties. They've seen and experienced some things you wouldn't even imagine. The pandemic is the tip of the iceberg for them. Oh, I can shelter in and be safe? Oh, that's nothing. Some of our biggest, loudest church leaders today have no idea what martyrdom, what suffering looks like. And yet we're talking about pandemics. Is, 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 is the United States Christians are suffering? Subscribe to Voice of the Martyrs. Learn about what's happening in the Eastern world, in the Middle East for Christians. It will put us into perspective that not to guilt us into, listen, we are so resourced, we can feel guilt and create our own suffering. This is, not what, this is not what I'm talking about. The suffering we're talking about is for the name of Jesus. Being persecuted where your life is at stake. This is the type of suffering that the early church is going through. Do not suffer alone. We need elders to walk us downward. We need elders to walk into our sufferings with us. We need elders to walk in our sufferings with us. And we need elders to walk us out of our sufferings with us. Do not join a church. And when I say join a church, do not join a church because you like the senior pastor. Do not join a church because you have this one elder who is your go-to mentor, business business consultant, advisor. It's not an advisory board. Our church, we have a great opportunity here at Ponce to lean on elders, plural, more than one, to walk with you in your suffering, through your suffering, and out of your suffering. Let's be a church of shepherds and sheep that enjoy shepherding. One of the studies I've done is I deconstructed and helped plant this church. Is I realized Gen, Gen Z, they can get their information anywhere. What they're asking now is who they're going to choose to interpret the information they receive. The church needs shepherds. The church, we need elders who are willing to sacrifice and spend time with the next generation. And listen and lament and love and leverage God's word and God's power of the Holy Spirit with them. We have a great opportunity here. All right, second point, suffering with alertness, verse 8 and 9. You've heard this say, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Suffer with alertness. Know that you have an enemy. When you think about our world today, we have become so numb to the reality that the devil has a scheme. We've gotten so numb and callous to the idea that there's actually an adversary who's out to kill you. We become so numb that when we look at our news, we're just kind of like, ha, man. We give power to the wrong people. Whatever political 
party you align with. We think our enemy is Joe Biden. We think our enemy is Donald Trump. Y'all, that is not your adversary. There's one way, way more dangerous. And you know what? Social justice is not our adversary. Socialism, Karl Marx, is not your adversary. The devil, you, we get, we're not giving him enough credit. But here's our options. We can be alert and know that he's seeking to devour us. So when your best friend and you are having issues over race, are you giving credit? Are you giving credit to critical race theory? Are you giving credit to socialism being passed? Or do you give credit that this is the evil one trying to divide the body of Christ? Let me tell you what happens when the body of Christ is divided. We will not suffer well. We're going to choose comfort. We're going to choose power. There's two options here. You could be shepherded by the devil or you could be shepherded by the Holy Spirit. Those are your two options. I'm not a hellfire brimstone, but I did come up out of a Southern Baptist tradition. And I do believe every sermon is my job to present there's two options. There's the heaven option, bring heaven on earth. And there's the hell option, the brokenness of this world. And the schemes of the devil that are, are, is seeking to kill you. He comes, one shepherd comes after your family, your community, your comfort, your money. And one will shepherd you through grace, forgiveness, patience. The fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. You ain't holding your tongue. You can tweet whatever you want. Is that shepherd by the Holy Spirit? Long-suffering? Patience, better word for patience is long-suffering. This long-suffering of understanding and loving people that are hard to love. Who's shepherding you? Here's the grace, the reality of knowing the schemes of the devil, the reality of knowing your adversary, the enemy, is the devil. The grace is that it will affirm your faith. The grace is when you actually understand that the devil is here to steal, kill, and destroy. You are stronger. The more attacks he puts on, you are stronger because it firms up your faith. And you can look for your heaven, not now, but to come. You know that restoration is coming when Christ returns. We should be a community that says, we're trying our best to be heaven on earth. But we, we honestly are ready for Jesus to come back. We're ready for him to come back. We hate it here. Last point. Suffering with hope. Verse 10 through 11. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Where is Jesus in this passage? Every sermon, every teaching you go through, as you study God's word, you should ask the question, where is Jesus here? Let me tell you what Jesus is here. John 10, 10, and 11. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. It cost him everything. To be your shepherd, it cost him his life. It cost him to humble himself. Hebrews 13, now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will. You cannot suffer with hope 
without Jesus. And you know you have an advocate who can sympathize with all your weaknesses, yet was without sin. It doesn't matter what you're going through. If you're going through gender dysphoria, I tell my transgender people, like the transgender ministry, Jesus was the most uncomfortable in his earthly body. That's good news for you. To the poor, to, Jesus was the Jesus says the weak and the meek inter, inherit the eternal kingdom. That's grace for you. I'm sitting there talking to one of our core team members who's going through this challenge of, of discern between the schemes of the devil and the, the Holy Spirit freedom. His business personality with this Christian personality. And I said to him, I said, bro, tell me, what does Jesus say to you? He couldn't say it. I said, what does Jesus say of you? Do you have to do all this stuff for Jesus for him to accept you? And he couldn't, he couldn't get up the words. A lot of us in here today, we cannot say the affections of Christ because we have so much shame, because we have so much guilt. But God's word here gives us hope. Saints of God, he restores. I make all things new. He confirms, you are my beloved. He strengthens. You have been weak. Now you are strong. He establishes my kingdom come, my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is the chief shepherd. He is all over this passage. And he is all over your heart in your suffering that you don't have to do it alone. He's given you a community. He's even given you elders to oversee you. He wants you to be alert that you're going to be attacked. And he wants to know, he wants you to know most of all, that our hope is not here. Our hope is in the restoration that's to come. Jesus is the chief shepherd who leads us into our suffering, through our suffering, and out of our suffering. Let's pray. Father God, I pray that our hope would not be in a November's election. I do pray our hope isn't in who is in office as president. November's coming, Lord. I know this church, our church, is going to be divided. But we're praying for grace that our hope would be in the one who says, to him be the dominion forever and ever. Restore us, confirm us, strengthen us. Establish us, Lord. We want all of grace to abound. We seek the welfare of the city because in its welfare we'll find our welfare. We'll find you. Establish us, Lord. Our hope is in you. Thank you for shepherding us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Hung. Uh, this past week, I was reminded as I was processing with a shepherd uh, just about life and my frustrations with it. And uh, it reminded me of a quote by an author, Larry Crabb, who wrote in his book, Finding God. He said, uh, uh, I came to realize, and this was in a period of his life, it was really hard. He said, I began to realize that I did not want a person to know in God but I wanted a God who would make my life work. And that's something I could really, I'm like, man, I get that. I, I, I can resonate with that. Uh, but the reality is we have a Savior who, right, who, who wants to know us and wants us to know that he knows what we're going through, what we're facing, what we're experiencing. And somehow Paul says it's through 
joining in Christ's sufferings, what? That I get to know him better. I don't know about you, but I, I, don't, I don't really like that. <laughs> I, want, I want to get to know Jesus a different way, right? But it's, it's through his sufferings that we really get to get in touch with the heartbeat of who he is, his desire, his longing for his people, for, to reconcile us to himself so that all people can be seen, that the invisible would become visible with him. Amen. So thank you so much for bringing the word today. And it's with that that we now come to that our time of worship where we do communion. And I just want to uh, say a brief word to those who are on Facebook Live who can't uh, be here to participate in communion here. Um, you can still uh, find some wine, some grape juice in your home, uh, I'm sure you have some crackers of some kind in your home. There's nothing special about our juice and crackers, right? They're just in a little plastic cup with a, with a sealed thing on it. It has this gluten-free option on top of it. Uh, there's nothing special about it. There's nothing special about me. There's nothing special about you being here in this church, in the physical body, right? What's, what's special is that we are united together to Christ via the Holy Spirit. And there is no distance that the Spirit cannot get to you. And so if you would like to participate through communion at your home, uh, while you're watching this, you are more than welcome to, uh, and we encourage you to do so, so that you, you can know you are communing with the saints, not only here at Ponce Church, but you're communing with the saints all around the world. Every inch of this planet where people are reclining at the Lord's table, you are with us, and we were with you. Amen? Amen. So with that, I want to point you to the elements. The elements of Christ, where he gave his body, which is represented by the bread or the cracker, and his blood, which is represented by the wine or the juice. It's those two elements of him giving his life, his entering into suffering, entering into our uncomfortableness so that he might reconcile us back to the Father and into the community of the Trinity. If you have put your faith in that Jesus and what he's done for you, then this meal with him and communion with his people is for you. And we encourage you, we invite you to come and participate in it. I, might, I remind you that it, your coming to the table in the Lord is not contingent upon how good your week's been. It's, it's all contingent upon how good Jesus' week's been. And his week's been perfect. And every day and every week is perfect for him. And that's how we come to his table. It's in his righteousness, his goodness, not yours. If you are here today and you're thinking about Jesus and this whole Christ and faith thing is new. It's okay. We're really glad you're here, that you're tuning in. But I would hope you will see as you watch this ceremony take place that this is what Jesus is inviting you into, to come and have a meal, to be a part of his family, to be united to others who also struggle and fail, but they have a great Savior who wants to save you. We would encourage you to put your faith in Christ. But until you're ready to do that, Lord, th this isn't going to mean a whole lot to you. And it certainly will dishonor the name of Christ if we don't come in faith. Right. And so with that, let me pray, and then we'll partake of the Lord's Supper together. For those of you who are here, you'll notice you just open the top of it, just peel it back, and everything's there for you to partake of. And we're just, I'll... Uh, Say the elements, uh, inst words of institution, and then we'll just, you can partake of one or the other at your convenience. Okay? Let me pray. Lord, thank you for this meal. Thank you for this time for us to be together with you. And thank you for the suffering shepherd, Jesus, our Savior. Lord, help us to be men and women who cling to him. Help us not to be duped into following the lies of the world of what they say a leader is but that we would look to you and know that it's only in the spirit of Christ that true leadership is found meet with us we pray in Jesus name Amen
On the night in which Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took the bread and the, and the wine. He says, this is my body and my blood, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. Let's partake. to you. He gets the last say in his worship. Now may the suffering Christ, the Lamb of God who gave his life for the lost, forever and ever seal you with the spirit of his love and of his grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great Lord's Day. And just a reminder for, um, yeah, you can go ahead and be seated. Uh, just a reminder that for those of you who just want to be able to get to know a little bit more about Ponce, we, I will be meeting with you in the back, and we're going to have a, a, a little brief lunch as well. I want to just uh, also, for those of you, maybe this is the first time you had a chance to hear Pastor Hung preach, uh, you'll hear him again. And um, I want to encourage you to be checking out their website and their information because it, their, their church plant is going to have a great impact in in. It's actually, the web, their website is on our website. So just come to our website. Thank you. That's why he's here. I, I, sh I should have never let you leave. Uh, 
<clears throat> so that uh, you, you can check out their, their church plan, the things that are happening there. Please check it out. Uh, they're still looking to raise support. They need people to, to help fund their ministry for the next three years. So please check it out. And if you are in a place where you can do that and the Lord's leading you, please give. Uh, they need your help. And uh, keep praying for them. Pray that God will be working uh, in that part, along that corridor, along the tracks, for the glory of God there. Have a great Lord's Day. We'll see you tonight for the Be the Bridge event. And we look forward to uh, engaging Christ uh, together with you this evening. Have a good day. And it's too-